Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim. And I'm Matt. This is Living Soil Society. Welcome to the show today, guys. Super stoked to have you here. We got a great episode today, don't we, Tim? Yeah, we have a really important episode, Matt. Today we're going to be talking supplemental lighting. Uh, and for those of you growing indoors, uh, without it, uh, it, it's often not going to be possible. Uh, so we're going to go so over some of the really crucial uh, points about lighting today. Uh, we're going to try and take a shallow dive into some of the terminology that you're going to run into when you're looking for a light. Uh, so Matt, why don't, why don't you start us off? I mean, what's kind of the most important thing to consider when you're shopping for a light? Absolutely, Tim. And that's going to be daily light integral. How much light do you need in a given day for your plant? Does it need to be direct, indirect, and how powerful does that light need to be? So the nice thing about most plants is they actually tell you, you know, you, you go and you buy a plant like this, this aloe plant that's uh, to my, my left here, and it's, it's going to say something on it like needs bright, direct light or needs indirect light. And if you're planting seeds, for example, like tomatoes, it's going to tell you on the back, well, it's going to need eight hours of bright light in a given day. So when you're purchasing light, when you're looking to buy a light, you want to consider how much light do you need in a given day, but then the intensity of it. And the intensity is going to be, well, it's, it's related to the type of light that you're going to purchase. So Tim, why don't you tell us about the basic lights, the, the older school lights, before we get into the, the cool new tech? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm surrounded in a lot of the, the cooler new tech, but there's there's definitely been lighting for horticulture for a really long time. I mean, when I first started growing indoors, uh, it was all about HPS and CMH, uh, so high pressure sodium or uh, ceramic metal halide lights. Uh, those have kind of, to be honest, unless you're dealing with a cold environment, uh, they've, they've rendered themselves mute. Uh, they're, they're no longer applicable to the storyline because of how low they are in efficiency. Uh, however, there is a, a great old school style light that still works wonders and is highly efficient. And that's a CFL light or a compact fluorescent light. Uh, it's, it's actually awesome because not only is it uh, uh, quite efficient as, as far as uh, an older style light is concerned, uh, but you can get a really wide variety of spectrum out of them. Uh, now spectrum, uh, Matt, I, I think is very important to cover. So why don't you kind of touch a little bit on what I mean when I say color spectrum of a light? For sure, Tim. I think most folks are going to be more familiar with the term uh, color temperature than they may be spectrum. And, you know, when you're buying lights, lights are going to come in a color temperature. Uh, you may have cool white or or warm warm bright in, in your house and when it talks about that it's talking about is it more blue or is it more red the blue lights are going to be a higher color temperature five to six thousand kelvin five to six k the red lights will be a lower color temperature and they're going to have different different types of uses uh, there's there's some other full spectrum lights too and we'll talk about those in a minute but tim why don't you talk about the the sort of the first led light that that really captures that that blue and red yeah uh well i mean that was that was the game changing point right was uh when we got uh real led lights that were pushing efficiencies uh floating around you know really exciting 1.5 1.8 umoles uh, efficiency standards uh, th those are the blurple lights. So uh, at, at one point, uh, when we were still early in, in kind of developing light science for horticulture, uh, we figured out that the most efficient spectrums or light temperatures that were, were effective on plants uh, were the blue and the red spectrum. So uh, when the first LED lights came out, it was essentially that. It was a blue spectrum and a red spectrum sandwiched together, which gave you kind of a, a, a purple hue or a, a blurple light, as we call it today. You can actually see one, I think, uh, right in the corner of Matt's screen. Uh, so they're really, I still use them as well myself. Um, so a beauty of, of, of it, it, it has a very specific tuned dual spectrum, red and blue. Uh, it's going to very efficiently grow your plants. Um, however, it's no longer the standard of efficiency. There's been a lot of lights kind of overtake it as we've gone through in technology and figured things out. Um, and I think that would kind of move us on to the next ones, uh, which really got people's attention, which were cob lights. So cob yeah. lights, cob lights, Matt, they're, uh, they're chip on board, uh, essentially picture a giant light diode, the size of your fist. 
Um, it's, uh, it, it proved itself to be a great replacement for the older HPS and CMH style lights uh, because they still developed a good amount of heat. You had a very broad or wide spectrum of color temperature available within a cob. Um, and uh, it had excellent penetration or still has an excellent penetration. So if you have a very dense foliage plant, this is light to go with because of that broad spectrum. So beyond just red and blue, like you saw in the blurple, it also incorporated, incorporated green and yellow and everything in between. And as we found out, green spectrum is actually has the most effective penetrative value. So yeah, that's a real good point, Tim. And I think what what happened there is as we started to learn more about LEDs and spectrum and what the plants need and plants can use, uh, there was a company that developed and really had sort of a breakthrough technology in something called a quantum board. Now the quantum board is it's a it's it's like talking about a Kleenex being a tissue. It's 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 the first company that did it, uh, the Horticultural Lighting Group. They developed these quantum boards, and instead of having these giant chip-on boards, they have a whole bunch of little tiny diodes, which helps increase the the efficiency. But then you can further take and add in like more red or maybe more uv to allow for better growth of your plants overall but then something else has changed in industry and this has been more recent with a bar style light tim tell us about those yeah well i mean you had the quantum boards really jump everything up in efficiency and then the next iteration that we have is is a bar array uh the the bar or array style lights are unbelievable efficiency so uh you're going to get the most efficient use of energy and light output however the downside to bar lights is they're really designed for much bigger footprints Matt. yeah so unless you're dealing with a footprint inside of 3.3 feet by three feet or a meter by a meter i really wouldn't suggest looking at a bar light as an option as it's, it's going to be overkill it's it's, it's really going to be uh uh hitting a, a, a nail with a sledgehammer. Uh, <laughs> That's so, a good way to put it. But, you know, last week when we talked about grow tents, perhaps you want to fill a tent full of tomatoes and you're going to have that dense canopy and lots of foliage. A bar style light's going to be perfect for you nothing in better. that regard. Nothing uh, because, better. Yeah, and I think just one more thing to really touch on too, uh, and we talked about it a little bit. Uh, Tim said it, it's the micromoles per joule. It's an efficiency rating. It tells you how effective that plant is, or sorry, that plant, how effective that light is in turning energy, electricity from the wall into energy that the plant can use, photons. So that number, you know, it started 1.0, 1.1 micromoles per joule. It looks like a little U mole slash J. And that's that's really hitting now up around the 3.0 3.1 range. So when you're looking at a light, uh, you want to just understand that the efficacy rating is the best way to measure how good that light is at well making light. So uh, Matt, I, th I think we've raised a, a lot of excellent uh, points as far as direction for shopping for your light. If you folks do have any other questions or you're not sure what would be the best fit for your space, Matt, what should people do? Leave a comment down below, guys. Uh, Tim and I know a ton about lights. If you're looking to get into something uh, and you need some help deciding, you know, maybe a Mars Hydro, maybe a Viper Spectra, uh, Bestfoot just came out with some really neat looking new lights that could potentially be perfect for your space. Some of these smaller style quantum boards, or maybe you want to get a bar style light and, you know, grow a bunch of squash indoors. It's totally possible. So, Tim, what are we talking about next week? Next week, we're building soil, Matt. I'm we super pumped soil. for it. Super yeah, pumped. Man. Yeah, we're going to go over a couple of different soil uh, recipes for you folks uh, based on what type of plant you're going to be growing. So again, we're, we're trying to set you up for success regardless of what plant you're putting in your house. Um, so yeah, join us next week. Look forward to it. Uh, like and subscribe. Love you all. Guys, I'm Matt. That's Tim. This is Living Soil Society. Thanks for joining us this week.